open camera white balance. Huge, huge shout out to Chad Lafarge, forward slash Chad Lafarge for his bird cams and a dozen birds, a couple of squirrels and the brilliant red cardinal or actual just cardinal. Chad will correct me. The reason I'm saying that is because Chad has, what a lovely bird, um, sent me in Hangouts chat a question pretty much which is a comment of Auto White Balance has your colour shifting a bit as focus turns. So I went off investigating this myself um, just this morning to see if this was true and after quite honestly thinking that Chad had said something which was not going to work how wrong I could be because I start off as you'll probably appreciate in Android open camera with the phone on the back of the binoculars and at this moment you can see on screen that I'm going through testing practice makes perfect that was automatic incandescent and what's the next one we're doing fluorescent and then watch the shift to daylight white balance where we're forcing open camera we're instructing it to stick to certain white balances as opposed to automatic it is an amazing amazing thing the cloudy part here is really strong with those strong greens and notice I've picked an area of the edge of the the forest here where I can get some darks and some lights and some green grass as you know if you follow the nature recorder nature of course is very green so all I'm doing here is practicing and I'm really looking in real time, literally in the field, and recording my screen to see what I can see in the future when I want to start using white balance properly. Because I'm the first one to hold my hands up and say whether it's DSLRs or Android cameras and video recorders, try and stick to as many automatic settings as I can. So I'm still going through and by all means keep looking uh, because we're going to go on to, after this one, a more wider shot without the binoculars and I'll show you what I mean because if we come on to um, the field, the farmer's field, of course recorded in June, we've got more or less a blue sky, not that blue, and we've got a green grass that is automatic, incandescent makes it look like that which maybe that's the effect you want really blue sky notice as I keep moving around how different the colors get and at this precise moment I'm going through and saying what do they actually look like not as strong a test as the more focused one with binoculars but with that said this whole thing of cloudy if you want to force cloudy really brings in my mind the saturation up so what I suggest we do as we follow an earlier in time me probably from about four hours ago when I was out and about this Sunday morning and there were two huge herds of fallow deer that walked off I'm still going through to see what we can find daylight cloudy I think I'm gonna have to do some more messing around and testing here but what I'm looking to do is not oversaturate it because I do add like 10% saturation anyway but now I'm getting to, into this final part where I'm just bringing it down into the shadow areas and I have sped this um, screen recording up by two for brevity just so I can get through it and that's daylight look then we go into we done daylight yeah now this is a really really final test which is excellent because we've got some very nondescript automatics notice we bring that in to some daylights and cloud look at the, the cloudy one brings the greens and the browns of the wood of the timber the tree trunks out really really strongly I think I've gone back to is that what yes automatic look when we've identified something that looks pretty useful look at that that is really strong so we're nearly, nearly getting to the end. I'll bring it over there. Thanks again to Chad Lafarge for giving me a tip off to try this technique and perfect it. Thank you very much. This was forward slash Mike Downs. See you in the next one and 
Goodbye.